Ever wondered why painters like Picasso and Van Gogh are some of the most influential people in history? It is because painting has been one of the most respected arts since the beginning of time, and the legacy of painters lasts a really long time. Today, we are going to be looking at one of the most iconic painters in history, whose life changed after a devastating incident. But before we continue, make sure you are subscribed to this channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any other episodes from us. All set? Let's have a look at the life of Frida Kahlo. Early Life On July 6, 1907, Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderon was born in Coyoacan, a village in Mexico City, to Guillermo Kahlo, a photographer and painter of German descent, and Madeleine Calderon y Gonzalez, of Mexican origin. According to Kahlo, she grew up in a sad home, describing her childhood as very, very sad, mainly because her parents were usually very sick. Her father was an epileptic, and her mother had several other health issues. Her parents had fallen out of love, which made their relationship with each other very tense. Kahlo described her mother as kind, active, and intelligent, but also calculating, cruel, and fanatically religious. To make matters worse, her father's business was greatly affected by the Mexican Revolution and the civil wars that followed, as he got most of his jobs from the government that was overthrown during the revolution, and not many people were interested in taking pictures during a civil war. So not only was the tension in the household as thick as butter, they also fed from hand to mouth. At the age of six, Kahlo contracted polio, which deformed her by making her right leg shorter and thinner than the left, making her walk with a very obvious limp. She was bullied because of this, which made her shy and withdrawn, but it also made her Guillermo's favorite daughter, since they both had to live with disabilities. They spent a lot of time together, and Kahlo stated that he made her childhood marvelous. She described him as tender and loving, saying that he had an understanding of her problems. He also taught her everything she knew about literature, nature, and philosophy as a child. Soon enough, he began teaching her his craft, and when she had mastered it, she started helping him in his. This is when she started falling in love with vibrance of colors, for which her paintings are known. He also encouraged her to take part in sports to strengthen her muscles, which was very out of place at the time, because physical exercise was deemed unsuitable for girls. He was her biggest fan and supporter, and they both remained very close until his death. Due to her illness, she began school later and was homeschooled for two years when she got to fifth grade. While her sisters attended a covent school, she attended a German school as per her father's wishes, but was expelled shortly after due to disobedience. She enrolled at a vocational teacher's school, but didn't last long there either after suffering abuse in the hands of a female teacher. In 1922, Kahlo gained admission into the National Preparatory School. The school had only started accepting women, and Kahlo was one of the 35 women admitted out of 2,000 students. She majored in natural sciences as she wanted to become a doctor and did very well academically. She developed a deep love for reading and became deeply immersed and seriously committed to Mexican culture, political activism, and issues of social justice, which led her to form a group called the Cacuchas. They were a small-time revolutionary party that stood against foreign influence and embraced the Mexican cultures and ideas by staging plays, pulling pranks, and hosting debates. During this period, she fell in love with Alejandro Gomez Arias, a leader of the group and also a student. Her parents weren't in support of the relationship, but she went on with it anyway. The Life-Changing Event On September 17, 1925, Kahlo was on her way home from school with her boyfriend Kahlo in a crowded bus when they had a ghastly accident. The driver attempted to pass an electric streetcar, but wasn't fast enough. As a result, the streetcar crashed into the side of the bus, killing several passengers. Arius wasn't so hurt, but Kahlo was impaled with an iron handrail that shattered her pelvis and caused severe damage. She ended up with a punctured abdomen and uterus, a broken collarbone, and a dislocated shoulder. Her right leg was also fractured in 11 places, and her spine was broken in 3 places while her right foot was crushed entirely. She also displaced 3 vertebrae and had to wear a plaster corset that extended her recovery period by 3 months. This accident ended her dreams of becoming a doctor, but it also opened the door to a successful painting career. While she was bedridden, she started painting in order to pass time and started considering a career in medical illustration to combine her interests. Her mother got her a specialized easel which allowed her to paint in bed, while her father lent her some of his oil paints. She had a mirror fixed above the easel so she could see herself. She loved to make self-portraits and gave her reason, saying, I paint myself because I'm often alone and I'm the subject I know best. 
She made portraits of everyone she knew, her family and school friends. She drew inspiration from Renaissance artists like Sandro Botticelli and Angelo Bronzino, and her style was heavily influenced by Mexican culture and refused to change her style even to suit her clients. She traveled the world with her art and learned from the greats like Edward Weston, Nicholas Murray, and Ralph Stackpole. She also held exhibitions and gained a lot of recognition, especially among the Mexican people, because they could relate to her art and gain the respect of Parisian artists like Joan Miro and Pablo Picasso. Her art was so good, she sold them as soon as she made them, and even sold incomplete paintings sometimes due to high demand. However, her failing health didn't allow her to keep that up for long, so she retired to take up a teaching position at the National School of Painting, Sculpture, and Printmaking, then continued taking classes at La Casa Azul when she could not commute to the school. She did, however, continue to make commission jobs for the government and other rich clients and was very influential due to her interests in politics. During her career, she made nearly 300 paintings. Personal Life Kala was married once to mural artist Diego Riviera, who was 20 years her senior. Her mother was not in support of the marriage and referred to their marriage as a marriage between an elephant and a dove because Kala was petite and Riviera was almost twice her size. Her father, however, was in support because Riviera was rich enough to cater for Kala who needed expensive medical care. They got divorced in 1939 and got back together the following year, although they have both kept having extra marital affairs. Kahlo never completely recovered from her accident and was always in pain. Surgery attempted to correct her back, but it failed, so she had to live with continuous back pain to the point where she couldn't sit or stand for long. She wore over 28 supportive corsets in the span of 15 years and had pain in her legs and a chronic hand infection. She underwent another spine surgery that got infected and confined her to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Her father's death caused her to go into depression, and a few years later, her right leg was amputated due to gangrene. On July 13, 1954, she was found dead in her room from a pulmonary embolism. Now, that is one sad story, but we do hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to leave a thumbs up and stay subscribed to our channel for more interesting videos. See you soon.